Afternoons with Christine Layton, 12.30 till 3.30 on ABC Radio Perth and WA. So apparently Australia's magic mushrooms are unique from international species, but scientists don't know much about them. To try to change that, uh, they at the University of Queensland have been given approval to collect and catalogue psilocybin mushrooms. They're the ones often found growing out of cow poop. Uh, experts will collect different types of magic mushrooms and investigate whether they're native, edible or adaptable for medicinal use. Dr Stephen Bright uh, is a senior lecturer at ECU and co-founder of the Psychedelics in Science and Medicine PRISM, who are a not-for-profit. Good afternoon, Dr Bright. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. What actually makes magic mushrooms magic? What gives them that quality? Well, they contain a psychoactive drug called psilocybin, and psilocybin is a classic psychedelic drug. It um, works on the serotonin receptor pathways in a similar way that LSD and other classic psychedelic drugs do. But I just wanted to rewind slightly. Because we're in WA, um, you, don't, you won't find any of them growing in cow poo here in WA. That's oh. more of a Queens, Queensland thing. Really? But you will find them in winter down in Bailing Up is the most popular <laughs> Uh, <laughs> most popular area, uh, but the police have a very high presence there, and so I wouldn't recommend anybody go down there collecting well, them. Well, you can tell that I've never gone looking for them because I wouldn't have a clue. Um, so, <laughs> the, and look, this is a really interesting topic because I remember, you know, look, when I was at uni, people would say, "Don't, don't take these if you're in a bad state of mind because they're only going to make things worse." And here they are being discussed in the context of treatments for things like depression and PTSD, how could they possibly help? Well, for a start, um, your friends are 100% correct. You set and setting are very important when um, using psychedelic drugs. And so we're talking about doing clinical trials in controlled settings and we ensure that there's a lot of preparation work that goes into it. So people aren't just chomping on some mushrooms randomly that were offered to them at a party. This is in the context of psychotherapy that occurs over several weeks before the person has the experience with the psilocybin mushroom or psilocybin itself. Uh -huh. And it's it, the psilocybin is the catalyst for the psychotherapy. So it's an adjunct to psychotherapy rather than oh. it being, you know, a drug that fixes depression. It's the psychotherapy and the... What the what the, the psilocybin does in particular is it turns off the part of the brain called the default mode network, which is highly activated in people with depression. And it's the part of our brain that ruminates on things. It's the self-talk, the, the, the bit, you know, our, our little critical voice. And so it turns that off. And for a couple of hours while that's turned off, all kinds of activity happens in the brain. It starts cross-firing. There's really interesting things that go on in the, in the brain when you turn off this default mode network and with all of that cacophony of noise people have these epiphanies epiphanies that often take 18 weeks of psychotherapy to um, for, for a client to, to realize but they have these epiphanies and multiple epiphanies in a single occasion of psilocybin assisted psychotherapy wow I mean just hearing you say that uh, this turns off the default mode network which uh, is responsible for ruminating thoughts kind of tells you why some people seek this out because it would be nice not to have the negative self-thoughts uh, sometimes. So researchers at the University of Queensland have been given permission to collect and catalogue magic mushrooms. So what is the significance of this? Well, there is an international psychedelic science renaissance and Australia has been exposed to a little bit of that uh, through the media with many of many promising results coming out of clinical trials overseas. We are now part of the psychedelic science renaissance with research happening in Melbourne, Sydney and a trial about to start here in Perth. Um, what this, what this particular uh, research group at the University of Queensland offer to the psychedelic renaissance, particularly for Australia, is because we were on the back foot for so long, this is really thinking forward into the future and putting us on the front foot because 
big investors and and uh, for profit companies are trying to figure out how they can make money out of these treatments. Uh-huh. And one way in which they can do that is by patenting synthesis methods and and various things. Well, you can't patent um, our native fungi, and so it may be that should this be mainstreamed and something that's used, um, you know, as a common therapy in ten years from now. Uh, people will be able to access it without having to fork out thousands of dollars because of a patent because these researchers have catalogued them and have been able to identify that they are unique to Australia and as such um, they, they may be, in, in fact, the mushrooms that, that are used in, in five or ten years from now in clinical, in clinical practice. Right, so it's good for science and could save us money in the long run. Yeah, because one of my biggest concerns about what's happening, it's all ramping up so quickly at the moment. There's a lot of hype, and the hype is is often driven by the companies that are trying to put up their stock prices at the moment. I mean, I'm a psychologist, not a financial advisor, but I still would not recommend anybody invest in a psychedelic company at the moment. It feels like it's a bubble that's about to burst. And so protecting, I guess, protecting uh, consumers in the future from these companies, um, it means that there's equitable access. One of the things that keeps me awake at night uh, researching this field is that if we do uh, continue to produce positive results and if we do bring this out so it's something that is available to people to access through this, to go through psychiatrists and psychologists, it's going to cost thousands, if not tens or twenty thousand dollars per treatment and so this might be one way in which we can reduce the cost so that there is equitable access so everybody has access to the same health care that's something i really value and that's something prism values as an organization right it's a quarter to two dr stephen bright is the voice you are hearing adjunct research fellow and a senior lecturer at ecu co-founder of the psychedelic in science and medicine prism uh, so not for profit um and and part of the research we'll look at whether the properties of Australian psychedelic mushrooms can be used for medicinal use as you mentioned what are the broader implications of of the research if successful you mentioned the the business side of things what what would it mean for patients it's just just the, the affordability of it I think one of the other implications that may be of less interest to, to some of your audience but of interest to others is that Fungi in general are uh, an under-researched biospecies, so we know so much about different animals and plants, we know very little about fungi, and particularly the Australian fungi, and so there's a, a lot of debate over whether the psilocyte mushrooms that grow in bailing up are, are local to bailing up, whether they were... Um, oh. you know, brought over here uh, you know, accidentally like so many other yep. plants and animals that have been Introduced. accidentally imported into Australia. And so there's also a lot of debate over, uh, particularly over east, where there are, there's, there's debate over how many species are actually local and how many are imported. And so some of this research will help understand the basic science of what's going on, yep. which, is, which is important in and of itself. Yeah, definitely. You've been hoping to conduct clinical trials of psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy in WA for treatment-resistant depression. Could this research improve uh, your chances of those trials going ahead, Stephen? I don't think it will do any harm. Um, I think certainly uh, the trials that we're doing initially will involve synthetic psilocybin, but in the future it may work out to be much cheaper to do the research using uh, naturally produced psilocybin extracted from these native psilocybin species. Okay, well, we will keep in touch and see where this all lands. Stephen, thank you so much for for coming on to give us an update. You're most welcome. Dr. Stephen Bright, uh, talking about what has been called an international psychedelic science renaissance, uh, a renewed interest in magic mushrooms. So Australia's... Uh, Well, we have uh, our first legal living collection of native magic mushrooms. They will be studied by scientists in a lab uh, with a view to perhaps medicinal use. Uh, And as you would have heard in news stories over the last few years, uh, the hope is that it would help people with PTSD and depressive disorders. So, yeah, I'll let you know how that all goes.